This week, Overwatch League, Raspberry Pi, and Pathfinder 2. All on Geek This Week. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Geek This Week. I'm Brogan. I'm X. And you know the drill. We've got a lot to go over and a little amount of time, so we're just going to get right into it. This week in gaming, Blizzard's massively popular MMO World of Warcraft has made its way back into the limelight yet again with its seventh expansion. The new expansion, named Battle for Azeroth, made a sort of pre-launch debut this last week as content was released to the public to test some things and allow players to get an idea of what will be coming when it fully releases on August 14th. The expansion is set to revolve around escalating warfare between the Alliance and Horde factions, and new gameplay modes have been added accordingly to make this global scale war feel a little more realistic. A new war mode allows players to essentially opt into PvP anywhere outside of cities and other designated safe zones, meaning that if you did opt in, nowhere is really safe anymore. In-game events that play upon this mode, like bounty hunts and airdrops, are supposed to be coming as well and many PvP abilities have been reworked to make for more seamless combat. Much more content is set to be coming out with the official release, including the much-anticipated eight new playable sub-races like Maghar Orcs and Dark Iron Dwarves. Be sure to stick with the Geekway for more info when the expansion actually drops. The first Overwatch League Grand Championship has finally come to a close. After almost seven months of tireless practicing and competing against other teams, the Philadelphia Fusion and London Spitfire teams found themselves going head-to-head at the Barclays Center in New York City, fighting for the trophy and $1 million prize in front of an audience of nearly 20,000 fans. After a few hours of playing, it was the London Spitfire that ended up winning and taking home the prize, but not before a cringeworthy performance by DJ Khaled as a sort of kickoff for the otherwise great event. It basically turned into 20 minutes of him walking around on stage, repeating his own name, throwing his hands up into the air, and occasionally failing to get the audience to sing along to whatever song was playing, as we expect from DJ Khaled. Either way you look at it, it was definitely a memorable event. This week in movies, after the controversy surrounding his firing, it seems that Disney will not be rehiring James Gunn. Over the last few weeks, hundreds of thousands of people, including the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy, have expressed solidarity for the filmmaker and petitioned to rehire the beloved director. However, in a recent report from Disney CEO Bob Iger, it appears it was all for naught. Disney and Marvel were apparently oblivious to the presence of these tweets and were shocked upon discovering them. Marvel must now find a new director for the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and Taika Waititi, known for Thor Ragnarok, as well as Jon Favreau, known for Iron Man and the Avengers, are some of the rumored candidates for the position. Whoever does get the spot, we sure hope they live up to Gunn's legacy. This week in tech, Raspberry Pi, the microcomputer known for its ingenuity, has received a new version, and it looks really cool. The average person wanting to get into computer science and programming still found it a bit difficult to know exactly how to use the device. Because of this, the creators of the Raspberry Pi have now created the Raspad. As the name implies, it is a larger version of the Pi in tablet form, which not only makes things easier to see, but its open source platform and user interface have been simplified so that everyone from the computer novice to the coding genius is able to work on their own projects, and more importantly, understand what's going on. The Kickstarter for the RazTab has already finished raising about 6,000% of what they needed to fund the project. Even if you missed the Kickstarter, you can still get one right now for about $230. I'd say that's worth it. In an attempt to improve disaster response efforts, engineers in Italy have designed a new robot. And it looks like a centaur. The aptly named Centaurobot, in line with its mythological inspiration, has got four leg-like appendages and a pair of gripping arms at the front. The robot stands about five feet tall and has incredible dexterity for a robot. Its many bendable limbs allows for all kinds of movement, some of which are even difficult for humans to accomplish. The bot is supposed to be controlled remotely by a human wearing what they are referring to as a full body telepresence suit, which allows for visual, auditory, and upper body inputs through augmented reality technology. Regardless of what this thing ends up doing, I'm pretty sure it's gonna look badass doing so. A new extra long camera lens is designed essentially to make you experience life like an insect. The Laowa 24mm macro probe lens developed by Venus Optics is like no other macro lens ever made, seeing as it's over a foot long. This allows you to get extremely clear close-up images of very small objects without having to basically plant your face in the dirt to do so. It is especially useful for capturing nature shots as you can catch things in their natural setting without getting close enough to disturb it. 
The lenses are still being funded through Kickstarter, but it is looking promising. An official release for the lenses should be taking place this October or November, and looks like the starting price is going to be about $1,500. This week in anime, the upcoming Pokemon movie titled The Power of Us has finally received an English trailer. The movie is apparently a parallel continuity of the original series, picking up right after the events in Kanto, and serving as a direct sequel to the Pokemon I Choose You movie that came out last year. The Power of Us also features one of the most dramatic changes in artistic style that the series has ever seen, with a much more contemporary look to both the characters and the world they are in. While it does cause a bit of concern for some longtime fans of the series, it's nice to see them take a different approach to this beloved world. The film is supposed to be shown in US theaters for a limited time on November 24th, 26th, and 28th of this year. Mark it in your calendars, because this is one the Pokemon fans will not want to miss. In other news this week, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition playtest has officially begun. As of Thursday, at the beginning of Gen Con, Paizo Publishing has released the new core rulebook, Bestiary, and a set of adventure modules on their website for free. You heard that right, at absolutely no cost, all in an effort to get as many hands as possible playtesting the game. These rulebooks are most certainly not in their final form though, and come the release of the official 2nd edition rulebook this time next year, they're expected to receive a vast number of changes, all influenced by the experience of playtesters. If you'd like to make your mark on tabletop RPG history, now's your chance. The next few weeks are the most important. And that's it for this week. Thanks again for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, let us know if we missed anything, and uh, we'll catch you geeks next, next week. week. Really, of all people that you could get Y'all don't to mind if I yell my name repeatedly, right? Like, Overwatch and DJ Khaled, like...